starting off with our top focus in this special edition. With less than two years to go for the next Lok Sabha elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi expanded the Union Council of Ministers, elevating four junior ministers to cabinet rank and inducting nine new faces, four of whom are retired government officials. The Prime Minister also shuffled the portfolios of several ministers and in his trademark style, surprised all and sundry by handing over the crucial defense ministry to Nirmala Sita Raman. Here's more on that in this detailed report. Four junior ministers elevated to the cabinet rank, nine new faces inducted as junior ministers, four of whom are retired bureaucrats. A woman minister to head defense and a young performing minister given charge of the beleaguered Indian railways. Sunday's cabinet expansion and reshuffle came across as an exercise to reward performance and get professionals inside the government system with an eye on cutting through the red tape. It was also an exercise in getting the political messaging done with an eye on future elections. So these are the top performers who were today rewarded with a cabinet berth. Dharmendra Pradhan, Piyush Goel, Nirmala Sitaraman, Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi. And these are the new faces who made it to the government today. Shiv Pratap Shukla, Ashwini Kumar Chaube, Virendra Kumar, Anant Kumar Hegde, Raj Kumar Singh, Hardeep Singh Puri, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, Dr. Satyapal Singh, Alphonse Kanantham. The fact that former Union Home Secretary Raj Kumar Singh, former Foreign Service Officer Hardeep Singh Puri and former civil servant K. Alphonse have been given independent charge as Ministers of State is a clear giveaway that the Prime Minister wants these men to hit the ground running. Today's cabinet expansion also has to do with upcoming state assembly elections. Three new entrants, Virendra Kumar, Anand Kumar Hegde and Gajendra Singh Shekhawat are from Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and Rajasthan respectively, where assembly polls are due soon. Despite much political speculation, no new faces from amongst the NDA allies could find their way into the Council of Ministers this time around. It is now being said that some ministers from partners like the Janata Dal United and the AIDMK could be inducted in one final expansion before the next Lok Sabha election. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Council of Ministers can have a total of 81 ministers. Following today's expansion, the number has now reached 76, leaving scope to include at least five more. Bureau report, we on. All right, that does set the tone for what the new team looks like. Let's take a closer look and break it down for you step by step. Here's who all got promoted. Nirmala Sitaraman takes charge as the Minister of Defence. Piyush Goyal, Minister of Railways, additional charge of the Coal Ministry. Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi, Minister of Minority Affairs. Dhamendra Pradhan, Ministry of both petroleum and natural gas with additional charge of skill development. Let's take a closer look at what the team looks like. Suresh Prabhu, earlier the Minister of Railways and now the Minister for Commerce and Industry did good work modifying the infrastructure and services of the Indian Railways. But the spate of recent train accidents may have derailed that for him and ruined his case. Uma Bharti, earlier Minister of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation and now the Minister of Drinking Water and Sanitation. The much talked about Ganga Action Plan did not quite take off and this could have perhaps dampened her chances of rising up the ranks and uh, hereby being shunted from that ministry. For further analysis on that, we're joined by senior journalist Nija Chaudhry speaking to us here on Weon. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us. First up, in one word, if you may, to describe this uh, new team and the rejig, uh, what would it be? I would say the biggest takeaway would be the appointment of Nirmala Sitaraman as the Defence Minister of India. And therefore, she is part of the new team that the Prime Minister now wants to forge and focus on, keeping in mind 2019 and even beyond it. Yes. 
Ma'am, the cast combination, which is too obvious to be ignored here, the way the numbers have stacked up and how the Prime Minister has ensured that the cast combination works out well for the 2019 challenge. I think he's kept in mind the cast and community uh, combination, uh, particularly in states that are going to the polls between now and 2019. That includes Karnatak, that includes... Uh, Rajasthan, that includes Madhya Pradesh, uh, that is with the new inductees and even in the jig around that's taken place. But also equally important is Uttar Pradesh where the elections are already over. Because UP with its 80 MPs <coughs> is a very important catchment area for the BJP if it is to do well again in 2019. So, it has, you know, in the way, for instance, it sent Mahindra Nath Pandey, got him to resign and he went as the BJP chief to UP. Then Mr. S.P. Shukla, a Brahmin from Eastern UP, has been inducted. Mahindra Nath Pandey is also Brahmin. So the party is trying to uh, placate the Brahmin restive opinion. They have not been very happy after uh, Mr. Yogi Adityanath was made chief minister, he is a Rajput. And they've also been feeling very uneasy after the pitch made by Narendra Modi to get the Dalits and OBCs and the concentration on that, those communities to increase the vote base of the BJP. So I think all that the Prime Minister has kept in mind. That Anand Hegde in Karnatak, he's a Hindutva icon. Yes. And I think that shows that the BJP will not fight shy of using Hindutva again in the Karnataka polls. Absolutely, the poll-bound state of Karnataka getting a hardcore RSS member as a union minister. But also, what according to you, ma'am, is the underlying thought for as many as four former bureaucrats to be inducted as a ministers? Why this bureaucratic push? I think, you know, the Prime Minister, even he was a Gujarat CM, he moved, he preferred to move through bureaucrats. So also in the last three years, he's moved, preferred to move through the bureaucrats. And we've seen the Prime Minister's office having a direct link with the secretaries of various ministries. And we know that the traditional politicians, the, what have been described as politician politicians, have felt sidelined in the last three years. Now, uh, the Prime Minister has counted on the administrative skill or uh, the expertise these people have in specific areas, specific sectors. So today's reshuffle has brought in four former career bureaucrats, experts in their area, Hardi Puri as a diplomat, uh, Alphonse was known as the demolition man in Delhi. Uh, then there is R.K. Singh, former Home Secretary. S.P. Singh, former Mumbai Police Commissioner. And he has now assigned them a political role. Two of them will have to be brought to the Rajya Sabha. R.K. Singh has given independent charge, so also some of the others. And uh, he, he feels obviously that this is talent which must be put to use. Uh, and uh, of course, with the elevation of four of his existing ministers to cabinet rank, he is also given a clear signal that if you perform, you will be rewarded. What uh, do the changes mean, according to you, for Prime Minister Modi's estimation of his government's uh, strengths and weaknesses for the 2019 challenge? I think uh, the Prime Minister has removed dead wood or what they consider dead wood. Some of them will be used in party work, some may be made governors, but the fact is that he felt that he, they should not continue uh, in government. So I think that he would want to signal with the induction of these people, though I think it's a tall order to perform only in 15 minutes. Any new minister takes five, six months to get familiar with the subject, with the ministry, how it functions, particularly those who are entering the government for the first time. And then for the re remaining eight, nine months to have to show concrete results is a very tall order. But overall, he wants to give the impression 
that I mean business. I want delivery, I want performance, I want hard work. So on that, on the governance front, he is being very upfront on that, that I now mean business in terms of, you know, implementing our promises. And Particularly, you know, the Water Resources Ministry, for instance, you know, the Ganga Rejuvenation Plan. Both the minister, Uma Bharti and Sanjeev Balyan, the MOS, have been shown the door as far as the ministry is concerned. So he's given it to Nitin Gadkari. Yes. And he's given it to one of these former bureaucrats. So obviously he wants, it's a very important project for him, close to his heart. So obviously he wants some energy to be uh, generated and some results to be shown on that front. Right. The underlying message being that the Prime Minister means business and uh, the 4 P is the 4 P formula that has been uh, talked about passion, proficiency, professional and political acumen for progress. That uh, has been a summary of the underlying thought and uh, the criteria in a way that was chosen uh, for this reject. Stay with us, please, ma'am. Let's also get in a quick word from our correspondent Raghavindra Rao, who's been uh, tracking the very latest on this story. Raghavindra, you've been closely uh, looking at the developments, speaking to various party workers as well. What does follow now within the party naturally is that given the vacancies that have uh, come about as a result of this rejig, uh, BJP chief Amit Shah now getting up for a party overhaul as well, a rejig within the party as well. Well, absolutely, Mark. And uh, today, the cabinet expansion and reshuffle is clearly uh, with, uh, with an eye on not just the upcoming state elections, assembly elections, but uh, the, the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Now, there is growing uh, you know, speculation within political circles that uh, the Modi government is actually actively considering uh, advancing the date of the Lok Sabha elections, the elections are due sometime uh, in uh, March, April 2018. But uh, there is a growing feeling uh, that that could advance. Prime Minister Modi, I remember, has often talked about syncing the local uh, elections uh, with the, uh, with the uh, state assembly elections and, uh, you know, having uh, common elections for both state assemblies as well as the Sabha. Uh, given that thought process and given the kind of acceptability that appears to be getting from, uh, you know, cross-section of political parties, uh, one cannot discount that possibility. But his uh, cabinet expansion and reform uh, essentially is to underline uh, a few points. One being that performance will be rewarded. Uh, that can be seen in the elevation of Nirmala Karaman as the Defense Minister of India. I mean, that was one appointment which no political pundit or political observer uh, could have get uh, in the run up to these uh, events. Also, the fact that uh, ministers like Dharmendra Pradhan, Piyush Khan, and Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi, uh, you know, they have been uh, elevated to the cabinet rank. Uh, the political messaging is very strong here. Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi, a Muslim face uh, in, in um, uh, Mr. Modi's cabinet, uh, and also heading a ministry which was always held, uh, or most of the times held by a cabinet rank minister. It was only during, uh, you know, this, this moment that it got. Uh, you know, uh, uh, scales down right. to the ministerial and uh, a lot of political messaging as far as today's uh, cabinet expansion goes. Uh, you know, these these ministers have uh, have been elevated. The new cases, the technocrats, uh, ex bureaucrats, will found their way uh, into this council of ministers. That is very interesting, and also the point that former UN Home Secretary R K Singh, yes. uh, Mr. Mr. Alphonse, uh, and Hardeep Puri. Uh, they are first time inducted into the Council of Ministers and they have given independent charges as Ministers of State. Now that is very critical. Uh, the Prime Minister has, has set uh, the mandate for these politicians very clear, for these right. MPs very clear. In fact, uh, a couple of, two of them, Hardeep Puri and Khans, are uh, still not MPs. The party mm -hmm. will have to find a way, probably through the Raj Sabha, to get them inside uh, the Parliament. But the messaging is very clear. Uh, the, the fact that four, uh, three of the four uh, technocrats, bureaucrats, have been given independent charges. The prime minister really wants these men who know the government 
processes inside out right. to come into his government, cut through the red tape, and get things moving. That is where uh, the talk of last mile delivery is being uh, you know, heard again. again. It is probably one area which the Modi government has identified, the last mile uh, connectivity, where they, seem, uh, where they see a problem and where they realize they need uh, people who have experience in governance, administrative experience, first-hand bureaucratic experience. That is what explains why these three people, three of the four ex-bureaucrats, have now uh, been made ministers and given charges with an independent charge. One. Right, I do want to uh, leave uh, with one closing remark from uh, Nija Chaudhary on whether or not uh, powerful communication, and I ask you this uh, for uh, Piyush Goyal and Nirmala Sitaraman being inducted, whether or not powerful communication and being effective advocates for their work have, uh, has been at all a strong criteria for them being inducted um, you know, to ministries where uh, powerful communication was perhaps not there all this while. Do you agree? I think, uh, you know, uh, you may be right. One of the plus points of Nirmala Sitaraman is that she kept a very low-key uh, presence in the last two years. She dealt with a complex issue in industry and commerce, issue like WTO, of which she had compre comprehension and understanding. And, you know, she's done inter international relations. She studied that. So, uh, if, I don't know if she had been high profile and highly communicative, whether she would have been rewarded. We know Piyush Goyal has turned around the power situation, has brought many reforms. Uh, but obviously they were not judged only by lack of communication. Uh, they were judged by what they delivered Absolutely. and what they bring to the table today.